If you want a quick reference on how to diagnose the problems with your airbrush, stay tuned because we're going to get to it right now. Hey guys, Flamo Therapist here. If you want to learn how you can use Gundam and plastic model kits to benefit your mental health, or you just want to watch some therapeutic build videos and challenges, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on any time I come out with something new. The airbrush can be a very tricky tool, but also a very rewarding tool when it comes to building plastic model kits. If you're having trouble figuring out that perfect way to get your paint down on your plastic, I'm going to show you a quick couple of ways how you can diagnose the problem and go forward from there. So without further ado, let's head over to my paint station. Okay, so we're all set up for today's video, and what I want to show you is just kind of like, kind of what I've got set up here. Um, it's just a foam block that I have with the spoons, and if you're just learning how to airbrush, spoons are a great practicing tool. And so I'm gonna go through kind of what I'm gonna do today. And so first, I'm gonna start off is I'm gonna do um, a good run, and that's gonna be our baseline to compare the rest of the runs that we're gonna do. And I've labeled each of the spoons to kind of show you what the problem is, so then that way you can kind of diagnose it as you go along. And so we've got things from too much paint to too little paint. I'm sorry, too thick paint and then too thin paint, um, low PSI, high PSI. Then we have a combination of thick paint and high PSI, thick paint, low PSI, and then thin paint, high PSI, thin paint, low PSI. And the last one is gonna be what happens when you go too light and then too heavy. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a good. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you go too light. And then I'm gonna look, um, show you what it looks like when you go too heavy. So I'll get my airbrush all set up and then we'll go ahead and get painting right away. All right, I was gonna skip through this part, but I figured I'd give you guys a um, quick overview of how I get ready for my painting. And so when I'm painting with acrylics, there are three things that you need. I usually use the Airbrush Flow Improver. The choice of paint today is gonna be black. It's gonna be easiest to see on camera. And then some sort of thinner. This is the Airbrush brand Vallejo Thinner, but in another bottle I have over here, this is actually just regular water. And then I put a little bit of um, poster tack from an earlier paint job on there so I can tell the difference between my thinner and just regular water. And so when I get ready for my paint job, obviously first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my paints ready, give it a nice mix, make sure it's mixed properly in the bottle. Then I'll go ahead, I'm gonna start with two drops of flow improver. Two. And based on the recommendations, they say about two drops of flow improver for 10 drops of paint. And I do follow that, I kind of find that good as a baseline start. So two drops of flow improver, and let's do 10 drops of paint. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Cap it off. And then some thinner. And then what I'll usually do is I'll go about two or three drops of thinner. One, oops, a little bit extra. That's okay. Because I'm gonna show you what happens when I'm not too sure if my paint's the correct mix. Then what I do is I take a cheap brush like this. I normally have a mixer, but I can't find it right now. So one of the other things I have is I have a little cheap paintbrush like this that I got from Walmart. Um, I got a pack of 50 of these, I believe, for, I wanna say it was like $3. And what I do is after I mix it, we can aerate our paint. What we do is you cap the tip, cap the tip like that, push down to get some airflow, and then pull back a little bit. And I don't know if you can hear it, but the paint's bubbling up there in the pot like that. That's how I know our paint's ready. And what I do is I'll go ahead and test it on my glove. And as I can see, that's kind of a good spray here. Yeah, coming in nice. All right, let's go ahead and get started on our good spoon like that. So I'm gonna come up with a paintbrush here. We're gonna see what a good paintbrush, paint job looks like, ready? So as you can see, we got a nice even coat on there. I'm gonna go ahead and set it off to the side to dry for now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this spoon here and I'm just gonna go too light over the spoon, meaning I'm just kind of not gonna put enough on it. And so, a lot of times, especially when you're kind of starting off, you don't wanna, you feel like you might be wasting paint. What you'll do is a lot of times people will be too far away or maybe they might be too light on the trigger finger, so there's not enough paint coming out, and so you'll kind of still see a lot of the primer come through here on the top, right? And a lot of it might be just kind of fear of going too heavy, which is what I'll show you next. And so a lot of times what people do is when they go too heavy, is they'll kind of just come in and they'll just Okay, so what you're gonna find is that when you do it and you blast it like that and you go too heavy, you're gonna see that it looks really wet and it's gonna be really, really shiny 
compared to kind of how it was earlier. And so go ahead and bring these one back. And if you kind of look at the first one, it's kind of got more of a satin sheen. It's not as shiny as this one here. It looks like a high gloss. And so you can kind of tell if your paint is gonna have a really high gloss when you're painting it on, right? Like you can almost see the reflection of the camera light in there, yeah? And so a more satin sheen when you're painting with acrylics anyway is gonna be what you're aiming for versus a very high gloss not like that. And so I'll bring up these two again. And what you'll kind of see is under the light, it'll show much better. But as you can see, as it starts to dry, it kind of takes on a gray hue as opposed to the black, still staying nice and black, yeah? All right, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna go with too much paint in the airbrush here. We're just gonna compare it. And I'm gonna keep the same as I did with a good version, but first thing you're gonna notice is that when the paint's too thick, it almost doesn't wanna come out. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see that, you're gonna find some splotchiness to it, meaning there's gonna be some thick spots of paint. And if you, I don't know if you noticed, but like I'm pushing down on my air, but I'm also pulling that almost pretty much all the way. And we're still not getting a lot of paint coming out because it's too thick for the nozzle. I don't know if you can see that, but it's all choked up already, so. All right, let's go ahead and compare that to our good baseline. What you can kind of see right off the bat is their baseline has that good, nice satin sheen. But this one almost comes out of a little bit matte. And it's actually going to kind of kind of look more closer to the two light. And that's because there's not enough paint coming out of the nozzle for it to kind of coat properly. So what you notice is that if it's your paint's kind of coming out a little thin, it might be that it's too, you're putting it on too lightly. But if you think that you're being generous about the paint that you're putting on, it might just be too thick. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to drop my PSI. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go with too thick and low PSI next. Let's see what happens here with this one. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there because I'm really not making any progress here, but as you can see that there's just there's just no paint coming out. I don't know if you can see, but there's two spots here up at the top. And what those two spots are were actually paint that's dried in the nozzle that got pushed out by the air. And so when that happens, you know that the paint's drying on your tip and that's not gonna be good for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crank the PSI up now. All right, now let's see what happens when we go Paint's too thick, but we got a high PSI on there. And so, while I'm able to get some paint out, what I'm actually having to do is I'm still having to go all the way open with the airbrush. And for the most part, it kind of has fixed the problem. What's gonna happen with this is, I don't know if you could see it on the camera, but it's gonna be very textured. Um, as I mentioned before, you're gonna be pulling all the way back before you're really gonna be getting a good spray out of it. And so one of the ways you can correct too thick paint is go with a higher PSI, but ultimately if you feel like you're going all the way back and you're still not getting paint coming out, your paint's gonna be, is way too thick. And so what you can do is you can go ahead and try to thin out some of that paint. So I'm actually going to clean out this pot real quickly and I'm gonna go ahead and get set up so I can do the um, thinner versions and the lower PSI. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm all set. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one, which is gonna be um, actually going back to a good mix. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with, oops, that's low PSI. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the high PSI. So what happens when you have a good mix of paint, but then your PSI is too high. So as you can hear, it's still coming out really hard, right? And so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go high PSI, While having a good mixture is gonna be kind of very forgiving, making sure that your paint's mixed properly. If you're high PSI, you can still kind of get a good coat, but I don't know if you're able to see that, but the coat is gonna come out textured. And so as you're painting, you can kind of hear just how much wind or how much air is whipping past the pieces you're painting. So if you hear that, you definitely know that your paint's definitely too, um, your air pressure's too high. And so let's go ahead and drop it down now. Okay, let's go ahead with that.
And so quite the opposite effect is happening is when I'm painting with a too low PSI, what I'm noticing is that like, you don't even hear the air really coming out. It sounds like it's really struggling. On top of that, what you're getting is you're getting a lot of just, can I just focus it there? There you go. You're getting a lot of speckling. And what that means is that like, it's not coming up. The paint um, particles are not coming out evenly. And so you're gonna have some darker spots and some lighter spots here. And so what I'm really having to do is stay very close and um, move very slow to get the same amount of coverage I would have gotten had I gone with maybe a better um, coat there. Whoops. Maybe had I gone with like a better um, PSI there. And so if you feel like you're getting really close to your piece and you're having to stay really long on there, on top of not really being able to hear your air, then what's probably happening is your paint pressure is too low, even if you have a good mix, okay? Hey guys, if you're finding value in this content, go ahead and leave a like. It lets me know you guys are appreciating the content that I'm putting out so far. If you haven't done so already and you wanna stay up to date on any time I come out with a new video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification to stay up to date whenever something new comes out. Now, let's get back to the airbrush. I'm gonna go a little bit higher. And the more you paint, the more you start to kind of learn where you're at, right? Um, best thing to do is if you're making mixes and you want to test and see how it is, write things down. Take the time to write out like, okay, I did, I did two drops of flow improver, about three to five drops of thinner, and then 10 drops of paint and see how that comes out. Kind of take note of that and then kind of go from there. And so if you're practicing and you want to get better and you want to learn what's good for you, you just make sure that you um, go ahead and you write things down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the, the brush here and I'm just going to take some regular thinner. I'm just going to add just a little bit too much and that's going to be like that. So we'll go ahead and mix it. One thing for sure is before you even paint, if your paint looks too watery, and I mean like it looks like it's just colored water, you're definitely going to be too thick, uh, too thin. And so that's what I have right here. I have colored water. That's okay. Let's go ahead and look at this one here. So. As you can see, it's really glossy, but when I actually put my hand up behind it, can it focus? What's actually happening is, even though on camera it looks like it is actually a nice even coat, I can actually still see through the paints onto the plastic behind it, onto the primer behind it. And so when it dries, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that it's definitely gonna be, um, it's probably gonna look closer to the like too thin layer when you're painting too thin, but Right now, it looks really glossy, and I can actually see through it. It's almost transparent right now. And so, when your paint is too thin, but you're at the correct PSI, what's gonna happen is, it's going to look very transparent and glossy when you paint it on. All right, a little thin, but low PSI. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but the paint, as I'm starting to paint, it's starting to run. Can you see that? Like down the side there. Paint's starting to run. Let's see if I can continue this on here. Okay, I don't know if you can see this too, but as I'm painting and I push the airbrush down, this is way too thin. And this isn't even just low PSI, this is just paint that's just way too thin. You can almost like push your paint out of the way, which in turn can be a cool effect if that's what you're trying. But when you're trying to get good even coats, that's definitely not gonna work. And as it dries, it's just not gonna be even. All right. So what happens when your paint is too thin and your PSI is too high, I'm gonna just do it right here, ready? So right there, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see what's called spider webbing. And so what's gonna happen is the paint, as you put it down, it's being pushed down too hard and pushed out across the piece, but it's not drying in time before it gets to that edge and then it starts to spider web out and so it starts to see like these fingers like that so if i do it again yeah you'll see paint splotches like that but let's try to get the whole piece okay so i'm gonna hold it like this and what you're gonna notice is as you're painting if it's too thin you're gonna get a really glossy coat and i don't know if you just saw that but i just had literally just my paint's literally dripping off and so one thing to look out for, I guess, when you're painting is if your paint looks way too watery, if it looks really glossy, and even starts to look transparent, then your paint is definitely not at the right thickness, right? Um, the right ratios. And also if your PSI is too high, what you're gonna get is that spider webbing. So 
I'll go ahead and demonstrate the spider weapon real quickly. This time I'll use the inside palm of my glove so you guys can see it a little bit clearer again. So one of the times spider webbing is when PS high is too high, paint's too thin. There you go. Very um, stark example of um, spider webbing there. Yeah. So if you start to see that your PSI is too high and your paint's too thin, I'd say bring it down just a little bit um, on both ends. And then just again, take notes when you're painting just to kind of give yourself um, a bit of an advantage so you don't make the same mistakes over and over again. And ultimately, you can learn from your old mistakes here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get cleaned up. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna bring back our final pieces. I'm gonna let them dry and then we'll go ahead and get a final look at all of them. All right, you're back. All right, so first comparison we're gonna do is we have our baseline here, which is a good run. Something with too much paint and then something that's too thin. And so I think immediately right off the bat, you can see that the too thin, um, a lot of the paint was running off. And what you're gonna find is it's gonna start to pull up as you paint and then start to run off. And so that's what you see here is all that runoff. And what's left is a very um, transparent paint job. It's not black like it is over here on the good one. Um, when you come over here to the too much paint, it's gonna look a little bit better, but the problem that's gonna happen is, what you're gonna see is it's not gonna be um, an even coat, and you're gonna notice that it's gonna have some texturing to it. It's not gonna be a smooth finish. So when you compare something that has too much paint to something that might be better, try thinning down a little bit. If you're not getting that really smooth finish, one that doesn't look like it has texture to it. If you see a lot of texture, it might be too thick, and you can, kind of, you can almost kind of feel it a little bit there. Yeah, so. Good versus too much paint versus too thin paint. So next we're gonna go too heavy versus too light. And so one thing you notice about the too heavy is initially it was very glossy and it looked like it was an even coat. But as you can see, there's like this big line here that shows that up here had a lot more paint than down below and it created a pool line. And so when you, if you notice that your pieces are having pool lines, then you know you're going a little too heavy with your paints. On the flip side, and when you look at here on the one that's too light, it's not as, it's not as um, opaque as the too heavy and the good and you see like i don't know if you can see up towards the edges here but it's still very very white up here at the top because i didn't get enough up there so comparison of something that's good versus too heavy too heavy when you put your coat is too heavy and if your coat is too light you'll still have a lot of the primer showing through all right so i finally got these into focus here because i want to show you more of the textures of it. so when your psi is too high i don't know if you could see this here but you can see a lot of like a grainy texture to it versus the good one where it's much more smoother to it oh, and i lost my focus okay so this one's got a lot more texture to it um you can't see it on the camera but i definitely see like as we get to around the edges it gets a little bit smoother but definitely here in the middle is a lot more texturing and obviously when it's too light you're going to focus too long on specific spots and you're definitely what's going to happen is you're going to get an uneven coat to it so so it happens when your psi is too high you're going to get a lot of texturing psi is too low you're going to have to get a lot of it a lot closer and you're going to have to spend more time in one place meaning uneven coats when you get through it all right moving on to the next set this is gonna be the good, our thick but low PSI, and then our thick and high PSI. So, as you can see, starting with the good, got our good even coat here, nice and smooth. This was probably the one that came out the best compared to all of the other mistakes where if the PSI was, if it was thick, the high PSI, what's happening is the extra air force is actually getting it to come out really well. And so it's actually able to kind of correct the mistake of having um, too thick of a paint and too high of a PSI. But what you notice as you're spraying is as I was painting here, um, I was pulling all the way back on that airbrush just to get it to, excuse me, to spray nice and evenly. And so if you find yourself opening up that airbrush all the way just to get yourself to spray evenly, your paint's too thick and your, air, your PSI is too high. And then again, conversely on the low side, when the paint is too thick and your PSI is too low, it's not gonna get it out very well and if you can see up here at the top as i was mentioning earlier but i couldn't see in the video was that it has those spots there and that's because it's dried up paint on the nozzle that was too thick and then when i sprayed it it released it and it got stuck to the piece there so make sure if you start to see it where it's starting to um whistle as you're passing over it your paint psi is too high and you're opening it all the way up psi is too high if it's thick and it's too low what's going to happen is you're just not going to get paint coming out of it or you're going to see a lot of those um big splotches Okay, so we're back with our next set of paints here. Um, this is our good, our baseline again. Always gonna be on the right. Then we have paint that's too thin and the PSI is too low. Paint that's too thin and the PSI is too high. And so 
made that PSI that's too low. Um, what we had is a big problem with that. Like we would get closer to kind of get more paint on, but it was just pooling everywhere and it just started to run all over the place. And as you can see here, it's running down the handle. And so biggest thing, obviously you're gonna take away is when your paint's too thin, your paint's just gonna run. And so when it runs, you're gonna have a very glossy when it first comes out and you're gonna be able to see through the paint and it's not gonna be as um, opaque as a good coat compared to something that's thin and too high. What we were talking about earlier was that spider web where when you press it, when you shoot it out and it spider webs out, it creates like fingers on the paint kind of coming out of it like that. So ultimately, hopefully this helps you guys to kind of tell when it's thin versus too low and thin versus too high. But if you start it off and you notice that it's just coming out watery and it's just kind of a little bit transparent, add some more paint and then kind of dial it up from there. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I had a lot of fun playing around with my airbrush, doing some things that made me really uncomfortable as far as thinning my paints too much or not enough, and turning my airbrush hair way too low or way too high, and seeing kind of what the results were. I hope you guys some found something new that you appreciated in this video. I hope you guys learned something today. So if you did, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below, something you've learned, or maybe something that you've experienced in the past as far as painting goes. Guys, thank you again so much for joining me today. I hope you found some value in this content. Remember, take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you, and I'll see you in the next one.